there's another part of us that's the male side of us that thrives on accomplishing and achieving and being rewarded for that achievement which means if i have more ambition i should make more money if i more accomplished you see it's not like everybody gets the same in this world we're all different life doesn't thrive in that situation if everybody's getting the same but everybody should be treated with respect and there should be opportunities you see this is the male and female energies and because they're so confused right now in our relationships and it's very confusing you know, there's so much division today. And that's because on a basic level, mom and dad need to be connected. we got a whole generation of kids who don't even know their fathers. 70% of black boys don't even know their fathers. They have been absent, gone. And so they have a mother, a, a boy ideally has a mother who likes men <laughs> mm-hmm. and loves men. And then you're a male, you're going to feel like, oh, I could be that guy, you know, and a girl growing up in a family without a father, how could she ever trust men? You see, these are things we have to learn. So, and I'm, I'm addressing this from the point of view of if you grew up in that kind of a situation where mom and dad weren't happy, you're going to have to learn new relationship skills. And the person you're with is going to have to learn new relationship skills. And that's a journey. So you need good guidance. You need good guidance. And the last thing I'm going to say, because I know you're going to bring on a lot of other experts on this whole thing, and everything experts say, I want to suggest that you take it with a grain of of salt, even what I say, because things can be easily misinterpreted. And I have a thing about people who, men talking about men, because I don't think men understand themselves at all quite often. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like, I remember once uh, a magazine article said, Single women, here you get to find out what men and women, men, what, what are men really thinking from uh, 30, uh, 30 different eligible bachelors in their 30s? What <laughs> yeah. you want to find is what are men thinking from men who've been married, who are in love, who can make a commitment? Because, <laughs> and I read that, I just laughed. I said, these all men, they're single, they're going to stay single, and you're going to get to know how they think, and that way they think is going to keep them single. You have to understand. <laughs> How men think from men who actually love women, commit to women and learn how to have good relationships with women. And that's a rare thing. So, you know, Michelle, your program here is so, so needed to bring in different experts in these different uh, presentations that you're going to help people with. And I always happy to be a part of it. Oh, thank you so much, John. Can I ask you one last question? Can I rewind to something you said at the early part of the interview and ask you another question about this? Certainly. Um, When you were talking about how men, when men have sex with a woman and they, they're not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean that they want a relationship with you or that they want to marry you or that they love you. And that if that happens early on, they may not have had an opportunity to bond with you in other ways, emotionally, psychologically, mentally. mentally. Um, So for women, because I know the women in my audience, the vast majority of the women want a loving, committed partnership, relationship or marriage. How do how do women maneuver in that situation? Because I think there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of pressure even on in terms uh, and a lot of different different advice on how and when to have sex or how to communicate about that. I guess I'm asking do women have a conversation with a man about what he wants before they get involved with them sexually? What's the what's the way to navigate this for women that want uh, a loving, committed partnership type relationship? Well, well, it's it's a big question. <laughs> There's a lot a lot of long answers to that. I'm going to try and say as short as I can here. Uh, there's so much pressure on women to have sex right away. And there's also more pressure than ever for men to have sex right away. Mm. Men have always felt an internal pressure to have sex, but it wasn't so much tied to our ego as it is now because the appearance is that all men are having sex right away. And therefore, if you don't get laid, you know, when I was a teenager, if you didn't get laid or a young man, uh, that would be, well, not everybody's getting laid, but it appears to be that everybody's getting laid. That's not the truth, but it does appear that way. And males hear that. And why aren't they scoring? And if they don't score, it's a blow to their ego. And as I've been saying, a blow to the ego is he wasn't successful. He testosterone goes down. He tends to not bond. All right. So so you he want him to be successful. And what he thinks what would make him feel so successful is to be like all the other guys are getting sex on the first date. 
And there's no doubt about it. It's going to feel really good. There's no question about it for him. Not all women are going to feel that great with it, but they're going to, you know, feel happy that they pleased him and whatever. And they're thinking that maybe we'll have a good relationship. And I don't want to sabotage having a relationship. And some women might be just tend to be more sexual. And so she'll have a more a fun time. And so it's a fun time, but it's not going to turn into a long term relationship. That's what you have to know is that when men ejaculate, uh, they detach dramatically. And if there's nothing sticking them in their mind and in their heart and some positive experiences together where he felt successful, he'll feel successful in the bedroom up until after the ejaculation. After the ejaculation, what happens is his testosterone goes down. There'll be a slump. Uh, and he, it, it literally, the, well, you can see what happens after you have sex. He rolls over, he's gone, he pulls away. And, and, and for many women, he doesn't call back and so forth because there wasn't a bonding beforehand to where... Uh, you know, a funny joke about this is, and actually it was in a role reverse. It was a 65 year old woman with a 30 year old guy in a movie and she's, you know, horny, and, which happens for women as they get over the hill. Uh, the, the menopausal thing is if they haven't balanced their female side, then they become like men and, and they just want to have sex with anybody. It's some women are that way. Uh, not all. But so here she is. She just wants to have sex and, and kind of like a one night stand with this guy. And <laughs> And, and he's talking to her, you know, and she says, don't speak, don't speak. You'll ruin everything. You've got a gorgeous body. That's all I want. <laughs> right, right. Keep your mouth shut. And it'll kill the romance. <laughs> That's right. So what you want to do is make sure that you're talking and you're being your complete self and it may kill the romance. If it kills the romance, thank goodness he was the wrong guy. Now, the second part of this is what you can say. So you might be kissing and touching and being close and it feels really, really good. And then he wants to do the whole thing because him, once it starts, it goes. And maybe for you as well, once you start, you go, but you realizing it doesn't work. Okay. You want to bond more and you don't want to have to give him a lecture on what men don't know about themselves. That's not going to work either, but you can share tell him what he doesn't know about you. And what you can say is, Oh, this feels so good. This feels so good. I have to go slow, though. I have to go slow. And he says, but why? Don't you want to? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I want to. But I have to go slow. And then we should say good night. Or we should go, <laughs> go watch a movie. <laughs> we should go get out of the room. Get, get moving. Don't just stay there. Have a big conversation. Kissing and then stop. We, we need to stop. I love the kissing. I love the kissing. But I don't want to go. You know, it's like first base, second base, third base, you know, that old fashioned thing. I'm kind of an old fashioned girl. You can say that, by the way. I need to go slow. But why? But why? He wants to know. His job is to convince you. You know, that's right. What he's pursuing. He's pursuing. He's doing his job. And you just say, yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to go, too. And then he said, but why not? I need to go slow. Why? Then you say, because. When we do it, it will be so fantastic. And if we do it sooner, it won't be as fantastic for me. Or and that, that's one. Another one is I just know when I have sex with somebody, then I start feeling needy, like I have to have a relationship. And, 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 and I don't want to be that way. Okay. So I know what happens to me after I have sex and I get needy or I want more. And I, I'm just wanting exactly who you are. You see, these are somewhat flattering statements to him along well, along with the big no. And the big key there is how you would say it for your personality. The key in there is to say, yes, I can't wait to have sex with you. Yes, my body wants to have sex with you right now. My mind's telling me I need to go slow. Uh, and I know it's going to be fantastic. But why do you need to go slow? Well, you know, sometimes I get needy or whatever, but I, I, I know I I'm, I'm really want to do it. Just not yet. And he'll go with that. Because you, you satisfied his basic need is to feel that he's got you wanting to have sex with him. Now, I didn't know that until it happened to me where I was teaching my wife. You know, my wife would say yes to everybody. And then she'd get overwhelmed. And I said, honey, you just have to practice saying no. And, you know, you can do it in nice ways by saying I'd love to. I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, but with me, I just want you to practice just saying no as rudely as possible. I'm a tough guy. I can handle it. I'm going to ask you to do stuff. And you just say <laughs> no. I'm going to say, uh, I'm not going to ask any questions afterwards. I'm not going to make you feel bad. You should practice saying no. It's really a good skill. And so that night, <laughs> I was making some moves for sex, and she says, no. I said, what do you mean, no? <laughs> she, because 
<laughs> no. <laughs> I said, why? And she said, well, I'm practicing. I said, oh, oh, honey, can't we just practice on everything else other than this? And she said, no. <laughs> I said, why? And she said, because this is the thing I know you want most. <laughs> Anyway, and we didn't have sex and I was perfectly fine. I felt like I'd had sex with her because she basically said that she wanted to have sex with me because I asked her, I said, so if we weren't playing the game, you'd want to have sex with me. And she said, of course, I love sex with you. That's what I needed to hear. And that's what a man needs to hear. He doesn't actually have to have the act of it. And but his job is to persist. So you have to uh, assertiveness technique is just simply repeat, repeat, repeat. Don't say anything more than that. I, I, I know I love to. I get it. Sex is wonderful. And I can't wait to have sex with you, but I need to go slow. And then you'll satisfy that, that pressure he has to score. So it was, well, we didn't have sex, but she wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he doesn't feel rejected. And then also a woman can be in tune with what feels right for her. She's not She's not giving it out of pressure or out of obligation or uh, or out of trying to manipulate or control what's happening in the relationship. 